Hey everyone, this is CLS01, and today I'm going to show you how to build a handicap access ramp. So here's a before shot of the stairs that I'm going to be putting the ramp on, and then here's after. And I'm still going to do a couple more things to it. I'm going to add some side rails and some carpet, but this just gives you a look at the ramp itself. So here's some guidelines to go by for what kind of slope you should use for your ramp. For an ADA recommended slope for unassisted use, you want to use a 112 ratio, or 4.8 degrees. So unassisted use means that the handicapped should be able to use the ramp safely without help from others. The maximum slope recommended for assisted use is a 212 ratio, or 9.5 degrees. And assisted use means that you should have someone helping you push the wheelchair or helping you walk up the ramp. It's not recommended for handicapped to use this ramp by themselves. And for any slopes greater than a 212 ratio, such as a 312, they're not recommended for wheelchair use. If you use a wheelchair on it, it needs to be unoccupied, and it's not recommended for handicapped to use this ramp at all. So this is just an average guideline to go by, but you should always check with your local building codes to ensure which slope you should use. So the ramp I'm building today is going to be 16 inches tall, and I'm going to be using a 212 slope. So when I convert that to inches, that means for every 2 inches of height, I need 1 foot of ramp. And that's because there's 12 inches in each foot. If I was to do a 1 to 12 ratio, for every inch, it would be 1 foot of ramp. So if it was 16 inches high, it'd be 16 feet long. So the proper formula for the ramp I'm building today for the 212 slope would be 16 divided by 2, which equals 8, so that's 8 feet of ramp. To build my ramp, I'm going to use three 2x6s. It's going to be 3 feet wide, and then I'm also going to use a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. So to start with, I'm going to measure from where I want the top of the ramp to be and measure out with a tape measure to pull it nice and tight and make a mark at 8 feet. After make my marks, I'm going to go ahead and mark it with masking tape just to see it more clearly. Now I'm going to use a string line and secure one end of it at the highest point of where the ramp's going to be. To secure it, I just used a screw. If you don't have a way to secure it, you can just have someone help you hold the string in place. To measure the angle I'm going to use, I'm going to be using a folding frame and square. This is about a $20 tool, and you can find these at most hardware stores. This tool adjusts at different angles to let you measure a wide variety of angles. So now what I'm going to do is pull the string nice and tight and hold one end of the string at the 8 foot mark and the other end of the string at the highest point of the ramp. And now I'm going to carefully measure the angle with my folding square. If needed, you can put a piece of tape on your framing square and mark it with a pencil to keep your angle perfectly marked. So this will be the correct angle I'm going to use to cut my 2x6s. Now I'm going to line up my framing square on the end of my 2x6 here and make a mark. So I want my angle to end at the very tip of the 2x6 here. So I'm just going to mark it the length of my framing square and then I'll use a straight edge to mark it the rest of the way. So here's an up close look at what I'm going to be cutting off. Now to mark the other end, I'm going to measure 8 feet out, because that's the length of my ramp, and make a mark at 8 feet. So here's the 8 foot mark I just made, and I'm actually going to be using the same exact angle to make this mark also. So I'm going to line up the level side of the folding square with my 8 foot mark, and then mark on the inside of the angle here to make my cut mark. So here's a closer look at what I'm cutting, and notice where the arrow is, that side will actually be facing up when I screw these into place. So I got this piece marked at both ends, let's go ahead and start cutting this. A table saw isn't necessary for this cut, but it does make the job a lot easier. Okay, it's time to check the fitment of my cut here. We're pretty close, so I gotta make a couple more cuts to make this fit just right. Right here where it's making contact with the step, I'm gonna have to notch this out. And this may or may not be necessary, depending on what kind of steps you have. So it's sitting about an inch too high on the step here, so I'm gonna notch out an inch and then cut at the same exact angle that I made the other two cuts. Now that I have it notched out, it's time to check the fitment again. So now it rests on the step just fine, but now in order to push it all the way forward, I'm going to have to notch the top out here just a little bit to get underneath my threshold. So I'm just going to take a 1 inch square out of the top of this, and that should fit underneath my threshold just right. And remember, not all steps and doorways are the same, so this is a step you may or may not have to do. 
Okay, let's check that fitment one more time and we should have it this time. There we go. We're sitting all the way flush with a step and all the way forward. And this is exactly how I want it to fit. Now that I have all my cuts down, I'm going to use this as a template and trace onto the other 2x6s. Now that I have my pattern traced on there, it's time to make my cuts and I want three 2x6s total. Okay, I got them all cut now. I'm going to go ahead and put them all in place. I want one in the middle and one on each end. And as you can see here, they all fit really nice. Notice that they're all fit nice and flush on the floor and nice and flush on the steps. If your floor or steps are slightly uneven, you may have to use some shims to level your 2x6s out with each other. You can just use some construction glue and put your shims where necessary. For my stairs, everything's perfectly level, so there's no need for shims. To secure these 2x6s, I'm going to be using some 3 inch wood screws. So at the point where I'm mounting the 2x6s, underneath the door threshold, there's a wood joist. But if it happens to be concrete, you're going to have to use brackets and concrete anchors to mount your 2x6s. So I'm going to tone out two 3 inch screws at the top of each 2x6 to the wood joist. And since there's existing railing here, I'm going to go ahead and secure the 2x6s to the railing also. Now it's time to make my measurement across. It's 36 and a half inches, so I'm going to cut a piece of 3 quarter plywood 36 and a half inches by 8 feet. And before mounting the plywood, make sure all your 2x6s are nice and square, and at the bottom, your center 2x6 is centered. So to secure the plywood, I'm going to be using an inch and 5 8 screw with a T25 torque head, and I'm going to put a screw every foot. And for the center 2x6, I'm going to go ahead and make a mark right there in the center, so I know exactly where to put my screws. Okay, we got the ramp portion of this all done, we got a nice sturdy ramp, and I'm going to do a couple more things to it, but I'm not going to show them on the video. I'm actually going to add some lips to each edge here. I'm going to screw some 2x6s on each side to give it a lip so a wheelchair can't roll off each side. And also I'm going to add a carpet runner for more traction. Well thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, just click any of these links.